Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we are back with more Hearthstone. This is the second recording of today's run of recordings, and I still have three quests to do because I just kind of suck and didn't get anything done. We tried a rogue arena run, lost three times in a row. And so today we're going to be doing Druid and Hunter ranked runs. Want to actually see some victories here. Hmm. Let's start with... Hunter. I've been playing Druid off of line, off camera, to try and rank it up. Uh, just whenever I have free time, I am always, or at least at the moment, it seems like I'm always, moving the schedules around, Rexa trying to figure out how to be doing. the most efficient, the life shall bring get as victory. many recordings Let's done, hunt begin. and to have as much extra time after that point. Hmm. I've figured out a system for any other inspiring YouTubers where I will record one episode and then uh, record an episode then turn around and upload a episode is someone and injured that way you have an hour of talking and then a little less than an hour of trying to of not talking take a little bit of a break. Job so done. in theory, if I didn't take any other breaks in between those two things I could do in an eight hour shift, could do four recordings in eight hours and four uploads, although that's not very likely to happen. It's much more likely that, that I will simply Job done. Run over eight hours, and that's what you can pretty much expect if you're ever going to be a YouTube or that you're going to spend most of your time working harder. Well, not part, probably harder, but spending more time than you would on a lot of other jobs. Let's see. Want this guy to get below I hunt alone. five health. That way, by the time he kills this guy, he will be. He would have been beneficial. So that's the problem with Zombie Chow. It's a one man and a two attack, three health, but he has to do at least three attacks to counteract his death rattle of <laughs> restoring five health. And he really did. But I hunt alone. found a way to make some pretty good mashed potatoes. Sorry, I'm sitting here quiet and then I start talking about mashed potatoes. But yeah, I found these pre-cooked soups. Not pre-cooked, no, but pre-mixed soup mixtures at the grocery store where they're pretty expensive, I'll admit, but what they do is all you have to do is add water, some of them you have to add like egg or milk or other things like that, but mostly I picked the ones that just said add water. You cook them over a stove and all the ingredients are proportioned out and set right. So I got a creamy potato soup mixture. 
and then I decided to go crazy. I had some leftover stock and I had some leftover marsh mashed potato flakes. And so instead of making a creamy potato soup with it, I instead made a uh, done. a pretty high quality mashed potatoes in the much more bulk. If you buy the soups alone, you're only going to get about four normal size cups or two big size bowls of, um, of soup per the package. But it's, I'm trying it out, it seems it's pretty good. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm staring at some really good mashed potatoes. You could have bad ma mashed potatoes. We've probably all in our lives had some bad mashed potatoes that are just, you know, a little bland, made from the flakes, n nothing added to them, but good enough. I mean, it's not one of those foods where you can make it just horrible without trying really hard. Some things can go bad really, not quite what was planned, really fast. Oh shoot! Did not read what that card did. What, what was the? Deal three damage to a minion and enemy here. Oops. <laughs> that calls for an oops. That didn't quite hit the mark. <laughs> that was bad. That My was a apologies. bad mistake. <laughs> Embrace the void. Alright, so he can't heal himself now, he can just do damage to my face. Maybe he'll screw up and... No, that's not gonna work. Why did that work? I'm ready! I'm not ready! The cards and powers that restore health now deal damage instead. Well then why did the card give plus two health? I guess restore and giving plus two are different things. Behold the might of storm wind. Job done. Uh, let's see, seven, eight, nine. Let's see, nine, ten, eleven. Shouldn't be able to defeat me on this turn. I haven't mentioned it so far, but I have spent an incredibly large amount of time over my life Behold, the trying to figure out wind. how to get food to be basically like a replicator. In the sense that I would like to be able to push a button and have some kind of 3D printer well played. print out really good food. I mean, even average food would be progress. And I'm certainly not the only person to um, to think about this. And I'm certainly not the only person to really make little to no progress thinking about this. But I mean, the way, man, I say but I mean a lot too. That sucks. And I'm hearing myself saying it. Anyways, going on. Probably say that a lot too. Uh, the way I like to say it is, I tried to get chocolate cake to go through fiber optics. <laughs> I think about a way you could do that. And sadly, there's been little progress. There is a pizza machine that will make custom pizzas, but that's not really that hard. It's not really that hard to make a giant machine that is the size of three refrigerators, which is about how big it looked to me, to make just pizzas. Because all, all you're going to do is have a base pizza and then have a machine that places pepperoni if they order pepperoni or meatball if they order meatball. And, and that's not going to really work when you start ordering uh, 
trying to include other foods. Um. I, I've looked at lots of 3D printers and they did come out with a 3D printer that prints like sugar candy. It's not very good candy and yeah, I guess that's a little bit of progress, but again, it is something where you cannot you're really not going to um, this is really not going to work when you try to do other things now drinks are pretty easy um, all you have to do for a drink is have a large amount of reserves for syrups like most found drink machines work with it's just you buy the syrups, you buy the CO2, uh, you hook it up to the machine, the machine mixes it just fine. So drinks are not that difficult. Um, I suppose if you want to give something like a, a tea ability or um, a brewing ability like instant coffee machines and stuff like that. Might be a little bit more difficult, but there are uh, certainly already devices out that uh, there was one I saw actually used in it had little pouches, and all the machine did was put hot water through the pouches, and you would tell it basically the general category so it knew how hot and how much water. So I would get like hot chocolate out of it, and um, no, you wouldn't get hot chocolate. I got hot chocolate out of something different, but I just made it myself using hot water, <laughs> actually. But but you get teas and coffees out of one machine, which is progress, at least. Tea and coffee are both require putting hot water through something else, so it's still not a lot of difference there. Uh, a 3D food printing machine that could also do liquids would have to probably print some kind of sugar glass style cup that would be what you would want it to do at least or well, I'd want it to do Just where shall I strike make it so that even the trash could be edible or it will be biodegradable done. it doesn't really help a lot if you have a, a food replicator but then you have to put styrofoam cups in it all the time. Now, that really gets to the base of all the machines. They really don't help a lot if you're stuck in like a printer mentality where you have to buy something that is like ink all the time. That's not going to give you what you really want. You want 100% independence. You would probably have to hook it up to electricity and water, yes and probably have to fill it with some base ingredients. I was trying to make one that would s just make like bakery items. Bake bread, bake cake, um, bake pizza. Those would be where I think you should start your research. To do. Well, and I didn't really do research. I just so had a lot of extra free time and so I spent it thinking about something stupid. Which I often do, um, but you might feel a little tingle. If you can make bread, if you can make um, if you can make cake, if you can make those, uh, those would all be. That would be at least a category. Making soups, if you could 3D print like a sugar glass bowl to, so there's no trash. Making a soup should be relatively easy. The, the main problem with any device like this is just how few of compartments you can have. Because you're really talking about, you need to a device to where you can put everything that w would be in a well-stocked uh, 
refrigerator. You need a compartment for each one of those, and you need a mechanism that will take each one of those compartments and distribute it to the proper places. So, it's basically taking every gadget inside of a kitchen and, and getting it down in size and connected to each other. Minions, servants, soldiers of the so I could easily see you have a compartment for potatoes, which get back to potatoes, and then you would put whole potatoes in there, it would hopefully automatically wash them and um, automatically wash them and peel them if the that was what the recipe required and then dice them if they well played if they if that's what the recipe required or you know turn them into chips if that's what the recipe required so you would need a potato compartment a potato cleaning uh, cleaning mechanism you would need a potato uh, a slicer mechanism uh, so that you could either slice it into potato chips or cut it into fries or dice it into cubes uh, and turn it into curly fry cr spirals if you wanted to do that. Uh, if you're gonna make potato chips you probably need a deep fryer and frying mechanism so it's just how many different cooking implements can you squish into something relatively small. Now, if you get to the Star Trek technology, the way the replicator was supposed to really work, which it would take proteins that were just stored, so there was just a, compa a compartment of atoms and molecules and the proteins, which proteins are much bigger than atoms and molecules. So it wasn't even as a the way that, that I've heard it described, that's how to how it worked. It's not even as complicated as the transporter, which took all atoms apart. Seems like the replicator only took it down to a protein level. Um, if you could get to that level of technology, yes, it would be really, really easy to make something out of nothing relatively speaking. It's still very complicated thought of a technology, but when you're not capable with today's technology, you're talking something bigger, bigger than three, um, three or four large refrigerators worth of food. All of the food inside a machine would also have to be um, refrigerated kept at the right temperatures. Certain foods, like when you start talking I about pickling wonder. and such, require long know. times to make. Uh, ah. So, that would be another issue. If you wanted to make your own wine or beer, you're talking very long time for fermentation to happen. So it, it would be a very, very big, um, big device to start off with. Now, at the moment, how do we get all these foods? We have huge factories with lots of humans being still involved, although very quickly humans are getting less and less involved with food preparation, sometimes to our own detriment. but. My seal for Argon! Yeah, so... It would take... It, it would take a lot. I mean, would take certainly a lot to make a machine that makes multiple things. It takes huge factories just to make one thing. Now they do it in bulk, and that there is some savings in effort that way. But... Need you 
to master. Into the breach. <sighs> but yes, I would really like a device like that. I think starting with breads is the right way. It's not that hard to have a compartment of flour. It's not that hard to put a compartment of milk, water, uh, water doesn't really even need a compartment if it's hooked up to the intake of your house. So you just need water, flour, eggs, milk, butter. So if you take the butter step out, if you're not making your own butter, which would be a more process intensive thing to do if you're going to try and make your own b butter. You could certainly do it. You could take unpasteurized milk and and have it um, well make cur curds and whey out of it and then press the curds into press and salt the curds into the cheese um, you could do it and then you take the whey and you make that into butter by lots and lots of churning and if you don't know the process of making cheese and butter it is a pretty fascinating thing to learn just on a, a general overview level so I would recommend everybody look up the process of making cheese and butter. But it has to be unpasteurized milk to for any kind of machine to make that and getting unpasteurized milk would be a bit of a problem in the United States. It's not what normally gets sold. Pasteurization is the process of killing germs by cooking something at a specific temperature that is hot enough to kill germs but hopefully low enough not to destroy all the lactose proteins in the milk and there's different ways to do it you can do it pasteurization at a relatively low temperature for several hours and have a better quality milk but most people do a ultra high and ultra fast pasteurization that is just gets everything up to a really high temperature really fast and then and then drops it back down before it destroys every last drop of the lactose proteins lactose by the way is a sugar so uh most people no, or, well, no, yeah, I'm not even sure if most people know. Sucrose is table sugar, but it is just one of, of I think about six or twelve sugars that are commonly available. And so lactose is the sugar that is in milk, and there are several others. Job done. Sadly, CES did not come out with any interesting uh, 3D printer foods. The whole extrusion 3D printing of just regular items, not food items, is not... It doesn't work good enough for what I, I would like to see. Uh, there are some 3D printers that are done by... Um, like laser fusion and some other things. I don't know what the term is called. But what it is is that there's like a layer is a powder and then you use the laser to melt the powder in the right places and it builds from the ground up just adding more and more layers of like plastic powder and then you have to spend a long time blowing all the extra powder away but you end up with a
better supported and more detailed item. But those are very expensive. I've never seen a 3D printer that I must protect the would like cut from a block of plastic or anything like that. Uh, usually those are just called CNC machines and um, well they will cut from lots of things they often don't want to cut through plastic because plastic will is like flammable it lives off gets off gas half depending on which plastic you're using mind if you could just make a pill for food. food if if there was a pill out there that says said you can eat this for as long as you want and that'll be well, that's interesting at least we finally got a victory really didn't deserve that victory but whatever There was a pill that just said, you could eat this, it's perfectly safe, it'll give you all your nutrients. I would probably take the pill a lot of times. A lot of times. Particularly if it was cheaper than, like, a meal to take the pill. But I would certainly want to balance that out with Rexa! having some good Rexa! fancy meals. Because I certainly enjoy going out Let's to a fancy restaurant begin. and getting a nice cooked meal. And it doesn't have to be at the restaurant. I'd certainly enjoy a home cooked fancy meal too. <laughs> but I, I enjoy a good meal. Job's done. But most of the time I'm not eating good meals. And probably true for most people. Most of the time you're not. You don't have time to sit and wait for one to be made. You're you don't have the money to always be good, to always being, being served such high quality food. this Spain death card has ever really used been useful I keep it in the deck trying to use it but really doesn't ever come about so I can so I need Stalag gone dead and then I need to get I just need Fugen out. If I draw Fugen next turn, I could play Feign Death and actually get it to work once. He's playing an overload deck, but he's not playing it very well. Uh, of course, he very well still may win.
cool is we could, uh, at some point in the future, invent technology where we don't have to eat at all. It's not beyond the realm of possibility that humans would develop systems to replace to get energy besides just eating. Which, by the way, eating is a very inefficient system, relatively speaking, to get energy. It requires the exploitation of a lot of energy just to, um, just to digest food. The plants have a much better system in which they are chemically they chemically just break down sunlight and water and some other nutrients directly into energy. If, if we could do photosynthesis through our skin it would be a little helpful, although that might increase the danger of <laughs> sun exposure. But probably not. If we could get energy like from batteries and such, like a computer, then we would probably be pretty gold. Minions, servants, soldiers of the cold dark, obey the power That's the guy you should have been waiting for to play all those overloads. Of course, it doesn't matter to him that those guys died. on your minions. Well, that's not gonna do anything. <sighs> Another loss. <laughs> Anybody has some ideas on how to 3D print? And you got You wanted to do the widest variety. Of I think doing breads and dough based things is a pretty easy start but then when you start talking about how you're gonna 3d print a cooked steak well that's a little harder you're gonna have to have some kind of meat container or you're gonna start making steak from cloning technology which would be really difficult um, so when you start thinking the more wild things, how do you how do you 3D print a salad? How do you break apart all the elements of a salad and mix it all together? Hmm. It's, it's more difficult, uh, and you sure you could tread every single thing down to little like small particles. But then would that really be a salad if none of the lettuce leaves were bigger than that one inch or a one centimeter square? Uh, not really. So, if you have any thoughts, if you're a genius, maybe you shouldn't tell them to me. Maybe you should go patent something. But, sure, if you want to share them with me, share them with me. If you think this was a dumb conversation, uh, probably I will agree. I'm going to go back to eating my potatoes now. That's the end of this episode. And we didn't get everything done that we wanted done. Uh, we got one druid victory, which means we're making progress because the last episode we got no druid victory, no rogue victories. So, 
I don't know. I don't know. Next episode, we will be doing, I guess, Rogue and Warrior um, runs. Maybe we'll do Ro Warrior and Hunter runs. Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll do Warrior and Hunter runs. And we should be able to get this only the Mighty done next episode. More and more often it feels like I'm adding overtime episodes. I'm not intentionally doing that, I am just playing bad. Like always, I ask for you to like, share, and subscribe, comment if you want to, and watch every second of the video. Have a good evening.